Because if you recall some time ago, you sent me a compilation, Dave. You yeah. sent me many, and this is part of the reason we have you on the show, because you're going to suggest a great tune for us. But you, uh, you sent me a compilation, and you uh, included in that a quote in this okay. compilation. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, and, no. And I know it was probably only for, uh, for my eyes, you know, you probably thought that it was a private thing between two friends, but no, we're now going to broadcast it to the <laughs> half a dozen people still listening well, to the show. Not? Yeah, go on, share, share everything. You lifted, a quote, between us. you lifted a quote from the seventh seal. Uh-huh. <laughs> Antonius Block, which I think is the main character in that. And these, this is the quote, Dave. Now, okay, I may have painted you wrongly, alright, but here's the quote. Through my indifference for people, I've been placed outside of their society. Now I live in a ghost world enclosed in my dreams and imaginings. That's not, that's not <laughs> Timmy Bannock speaking, is it? Well, I don't really quite know what to say. He probably sounded, uh, clever at the time. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful <laughs> quote, and it's beautiful in its poetry, and I feel many, often it's the same way. It's a great film, Steve. It's a great film, but, uh, I just wonder, is there a sort of darkness at the heart of Dave? Uh, I, I've never looked within. And um, I, I'd really rather not start doing it now. I think we're going to break him by the end of this walk. <laughs> I think by the time he reaches uh, Dan O'Groats, he's going to be a broken man. He's going to break down in tears on the end of the phone, and it's going to be a really moving experience, and maybe even um, award-winning. Mm. You'd like that, wouldn't you? I would you love that, Dave. That really, all that the, this you know broadcasting thing is is that you're sticking your foot out, and you you wait for me to fall. I mean, so that's exactly right. Huge I'm, I'm put sticking out one of my giant size 14s and yeah. waiting for you to fall flat on yeah. your face. And there'll be a big finger pointing at me and laughing, and it'll be your finger, Steve, and your laugh. <laughs> My finger <laughs> laughing. And the only thing that's really keeping me going <laughs> next week, which is really last week, <laughs> is the fact that I want to prove you wrong personally. Great, okay, well good. Now, th this is interesting now, because there's a sort of conflict now. There's a little tension here, which is exciting. And the yeah, idea yeah, that this yeah, is... Yeah, I'm glad you've it at last. It's, <laughs> it's great, it's great, it's great. Listen, five weeks or whatever. Well, listen, we'll be back live to catch up with you next yeah. week, which is obviously in two weeks, which is so confusing, we just have to play some music now and move on. But we will speak to you again very soon, and obviously we wish you all the best in your continued okay. adventure. Uh, which Wait, tune have you, you got... Do you wish me all the best or not? I can't quite make it out. Yes, I wish you all the best in your continued adventure. Uh -huh. well, all right. Okay. Uh, sorry, we'll cut out any of the dead bits. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, so, which tune have you chosen for us? Uh, okay, the tune is particularly cheerful. <laughs> it's um, Patty Griffin, Tomorrow Night. It's uh, beautiful from 99, uh, 2002, sorry. And uh, it's soul music, Steve. Pure and simple. Dave, I appreciate that, and I appreciate you taking the time out of your uh, lengthy walk to talk to us. As always, all the best. We will speak to you very soon. Thank you very much. <laughs> That was my hippity hop choice for this week's pre-recorded show, Ice Cube, and it was a good day. So, guys, let's have a little uh, debrief, shall we? We're approaching <laughs> the end of the show. Um, what are your thoughts, Ham? There's been a lot of bleak music, Steve. I've enjoyed it. There's been a lot of fun between records, but oh my, there's been some miserable stuff. Has there? Oh yeah. I think it's, uh, it's been. There's been a lot of beautiful tunes, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. If I was, uh, I was, if I was of that disposition, you know, I'm, I'm roasting my beef. I've got a huge knife. I'm listening to all this stuff. If I've had a had a bad time, this music might just do it for me. You know what? Oh. I really, I think it's a bit, a bit bad that you've just made a flippant remark about that. Because well, we don't know I, I what's don't, going I, on. We can't react no. to any real life move. No, I mean, no, it's, do you know exactly, me? I just think yeah. it's a shame that you've really, you've just brought the whole tone down. I was hoping you'd come in with perhaps a punchy little anecdote, but instead yeah. you've just come in, you've brought the tone down even more. It really depresses me. Dan, quick, cheer us up. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's been a good day, Steve. In the yeah. words of Ice Cube, I've not had to use my AK, which I always yeah. like. It's uh, always a good Sunday. day if I've not had to use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's always good. And um, again, though, you've mentioned an AK. Who knows? Maybe someone has today. We just don't know because do we? we're, we're not here. Yeah. I'm in LA. I'm just sunning it with with uh with Macronies, with my gang, with my homies, probably. Yeah. Uh, you are in Australia. I'm literally in Australia. Are yeah. you wearing some kind of hat with corks on? Uh, yes, Brilliant. if you like. And uh, Dan, what are you doing again? I have probably started the list that you will leave for me of chores, <laughs> um, <laughs> top of which is to polish your awards until you can see your own face in them. Yeah. And uh, my god, there'll be hell to pay if I don't do it right. <laughs> That's exactly I'm right. very much Cinderella to your ugly sister, I feel. We have been on tape today, which means that you cannot email or text or phone in. Do not bother. If you do, it will just ring and ring and ring. It may go to an answer phone. I don't know. There'll probably be Steve Lamac on there saying, oh, please leave a message. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. Not that I like Steve. I don't know why you don't give him that, why in that, that voice. I don't know why, I don't know why it would what sound a like that. Phone I don't He's know got... why it would sound like that. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, yeah, so don't bother phoning in. But nevertheless, we thought it would be silly not to have a week where we, where we, you know, obviously we want the fiendishly difficult music question because it's, it's absurd yeah. and, uh, yeah. it'll just, it's just a bit of fun, guys. Please, chill out. <laughs> <laughs> so let's hear from uh, Richard and his uh, preposterously difficult music question. And Richard here with another brain-teasing music question for you. Can anyone tell me the name 
of the first ever number one single where the name of the song and the name of the act were the same. I want to know the first single to get number one in this country where the name of the act and the name of the song were the same. It's tricky. Now I know the answer to this one because I was there when he said it. Yeah. And so, and it's a great answer, and it's a great question. Any ideas? Don't give the answer, guys. Just, just straight away. Any thoughts? I have literally no idea. Okay, Dan. Um, I'm thinking living in a box in the '80s, but then I think that wasn't a number one, so I don't think that counts. We shall see. All right, let's play Joe Jackson. We'll come back with the answer. I think this is a great one. This is one that people. This is gonna. This is gonna redeem the entire show. Well done, Richard. <laughs> Joe Jackson, is she really going out with him on this pre-recorded Steve show? I don't think we're going to be doing that again for a while. We've learned a valuable lesson there, guys. <laughs> Do not pre-record this show. <laughs> guys, thank you very much, as always, for coming in. Um, we had Richard's preposterously difficult question. Let's uh, hear the answer. I asked the first single to get number one in this country where the name of the act and the name of the song were the same. And the answer is the first act, or the first song, to get to number one were the acts and the name of the title okay, the go song were the same <laughs> yep. was that wonderful wonderful musical song Mr Blobby by Mr Blobby there we are Living yeah. by Dupe went to number one after Mr Blobby mm. oh yes you know there's a lot of people who are going to be uh, mentioning that one to their friends in the pub tonight come on mm. that's yeah. a great question no, isn't no, it no, that was good, that that's was good. Re- I think that's almost single handedly redeemed this otherwise uh, <laughs> mediocre show that's it pretty much for another week then. Uh, next week we'll be back live and hopefully we will have um, different guests and um, just a bit more adrenaline in the whole thing. Thanks to Dan, thanks to Harry, thanks to Dave the Walking Man, my special guest Stuart Lee, thanks to him. Uh, next up we have uh, Stuart McConey in the Freak Zone. Until next week, goodbye. i leave you with Susan Cadogan and Hurt So Good. last year you only live once hello again welcome to the steve show my name is stephen merchant i'm back live on the mic after a brief sojourn to the united states of america where i was staying in a very posh hotel and i saw sting outside waiting for yes i saw sting waiting for a taxi and it was after the grammys and i thought sting shouldn't have to be waiting for a taxi not sting um the man was uh, wearing no shirt he had some kind of leather vest on and what appeared to be some kind of moon boots um <laughs> walking on the moon boots obviously and uh thank you and uh and i thought to myself instantly i thought that looked fine on tv at the grammys but in real life it looks ludicrous <laughs> and it's all from the way it seems to me with the rock star uh, image and the rock star look you know it's fine marilyn manson brilliant on top of the pops mm. see him you know trying to queuing up to buy a lampshade in Habitat mm. looks like a bell end. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm very conscious of that and I'm just, you know, straight away I was thinking, um, so often you see people maybe walking down the street, maybe in, say, London's fashionable Camden, and they've got green hair, which they've shaved some of, and they've got, you know, tattoos and piercings. And I know I'm going to sound like a bit of a granddad here, but um, you see that look and it's all very rock and roll and they're obviously trying to seem very rebellious. We were always aware that they've probably got to pop round and see their nan at Christmas time. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it's all, hello nan, and there's something about the look, and it's just all a bit embarrassing. So, um, so anyway, I was just, uh, this is really a question I was going to throw out there straight away to my guests, uh, both of whom are here. Dan, you'll remember from uh, last week and previous weeks. Dan, how's it going? Yeah, it's going good. Thanks. Thanks very much. Nice to be here. But sadly, Harry, um, Erswell Harry, who works in a bank, has gone to Australia. Uh, we're not sure for how long. I thought you were going to say he was dead. No, 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 sadly, uh, nothing is, uh, no, nothing is excusable as that. He's missed the show merely, merely because he's on holiday faced by a man who's, uh, equally charming, but, but perhaps, um, better spoken. <laughs> a friend of mine, Rufus, how's it going? It's good, Steve. I, I must say, being, sadly, being used twice just before my intro, a little bit worried about that. Sure. <laughs> There, but there is a guy called Rufus. Yeah. He's, got, he's got a sillier name for a start, so, you know. <laughs> There's obviously a lot of people out there instantly thinking they love the sort of greasy, dirt-under-the-fingers, working-class working qualities of Steve Merchant. Mm. But perhaps a name like Rufus, quite a well-spoken guy, are you a toff? <laughs> <laughs> what a question. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I, well, it, it, unfortunately, listeners can't see what I'm wearing, but I'm in top pattern tails. <laughs> yes. I have a dandy's cane leaning just against the studio desk. <laughs> yeah. And I have a glint in my eye, which only comes with good breathing and, you know, and 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 sure. a nice nose. Lots of fine wines. Exactly. But so uh, yeah, right. you know, we've obviously we've we've grown accustomed to Harry over the weeks. But um, perhaps you'd give yourself give yourself a little build up, maybe a little introduction. Who are you, and uh, what do you what do you do? Well, my name's Rufus. I uh, I'm 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 uh, I'm best. Who's, 
Hugh Grant. I, I, I already. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I know, I'm, I'm, if I was on just a minute, I've been buzzed there already. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm an actor. I'm a, a painter. I'm a crime fighter. <laughs> uh, I, 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 you know, I, I do all sorts of things. I have no cape, but I have, I have a, a ready smile and sure. a, a variety of hats. Uh, and I, today I'm wearing one. I haven't been on the radio for a long time, so it's nice to be back on the show. Now, people may have recognised you if they uh, saw you in the recent play Frost Nixon. That's right. In which you played uh, the character of John Pert. Bert. John Pert. John, John, <laughs> yes. John Pert. John Pert. <laughs> yeah. John Pert. With deliciously Pert. Yeah, John Pert. Yeah, that's why. Uh, uh, Director General of the BBC. I, I played John Burt in 1977, who was um, David Frost's kind of producer and mentor in some ways. They're still very close, actually, Frost and Burt. Thanks very much. And, uh, yes. <laughs> that's <laughs> just a fascinating insight yeah. into the Frost and Burt to Frost Burt relationship. Keep it short. Really. Keep it short. Funny, Ruth. Really, <laughs> yeah. Don't get too. Don't get too. Uh, so, yeah, I played John Burt. You had this, you know, as I, I can now say on the BBC that John Burt had a slightly funny voice, you know, and, and was not universally liked all the time. And in 1977, he was, you know, even stranger. So, so people won't recognise my voice now for him on the radio oh, as John Burt. Uh, but now you also, am I right, you also understudied uh, the guy playing Michael Sheen. Michael Sheen, Sheen who yeah, was playing so David Frost. So I had to get right to the bottom of learning how to speak like David <laughs> Frost. And actually, it's sounding even better than I thought it was on the radio. I think the microphone is actually helping me <laughs> to uh, sound like David Frost. So yes, I went on once as David Frost when Michael Sheen was indisposed. And uh, it was a fairly terrifying experience, but very, very exciting. Listen, you have given us a wonderful pricey of both your career and your personality and we thank you for a round of applause in the Steve Wright Thanks. style as we play some more music we'll talk again shortly Steve Show 6 Music uh, playing The Faces I believe actually it's merely Faces I'd like to get checked on but can we, can we get that checked out because you know I hate to call a band The something if there's, there's no The involved <laughs> so get, get in touch if you want and you can correct me text 64046 email stephen.6music at bbc.co.uk .uk hey, hey, it's The Faces Reliably informed that it's merely faces and stay with me from the album A Nod is as good as a wink to a blind horse from 1971. I've always admired Rod Stewart because I heard once, and I don't know if there's any truth in this, that Rod always pays whenever he's in a pub or restaurant, always pays with by cheque. <laughs> because apparently um, he, he's found that often people won't cash the cheque. They'll have it framed and put on the wall, a cheque from Rod Stewart, you know, £469. Nice. Pounds. Good plan. And so obviously he's saving all kinds of cash. So uh, you'll notice that's why I often pay with cheque. <laughs> <laughs> I once said that uh, Puff Daddy was uh, seen at Wembley Arena paying for his security guards. Uh, with bin bags full of used Deutschmarks. <laughs> I hope that's true. Yeah, is yeah, that, is that sure potentially allegedly? Libelous? I don't know what the rules are. It could be. Think that's libelous. Yeah. 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 Hopefully, Puff Daddy's lawyers are listening, which they usually. I know they love such <laughs> yeah, things. Yeah. Um, but you know, I don't think there's any truth in that story. But it would, be, it would be great if it were true. Are you Puff Daddy? Do you know Puff Daddy? Give him the bells. <laughs> uh, get him to text in six four zero four six. Is that true? Did he ever pay in Deutschmarks? <laughs> now, as I say, uh, Rufus is with me. He's uh, replacing Harry, and uh, we've enjoyed his company already. But so uh, we have had an email from Harry, who's in Australia and um, he is, by the sound of it, having a mixed time. Um, I'm asking Rufus Actor to uh, read out this email so that we at least have uh, Harry's presence on the show today. <clears throat> All right there, Steve Show. This is Harry in Oz. No great revs at my end, <laughs> although luck was in short supply in Sydney as the cricket I came over to see was pretty much washed out by rain during the biggest drought in the country's history. Then on the following day, I dropped my ice lolly after three licks and was duly shattered of the jumbo jet I flew over on. <laughs> I'm now in Adelaide in my rich, rich blood, which has the combination, com composition and taste of fine brandy mixed with gravy, is proving to be as addictive as pure crack to the local mosquitoes. Charmingly, I've developed some kind of allergic reaction to the bites, which sees the insignificant nips bloom into unruly purple splodges all over my legs. <laughs> the biggest TV show over here is Australia's Got Talent not dissimilar to that Graham Norton debacle that's on BBC One at the moment. This week's star was an old man who played a note-perfect version of Imagine by blowing on a gum tree leaf to produce a squeaky, flipper-esque sound. Trust you all well. Have a good show. Catch you soon. Cheers, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You know, I, I did actually watch the Graham Norton debacle last <laughs> night on BBC One, and it was, it's compelling. They had a man who could fit inside a tiny box, <laughs> and they climbed out and bent himself around. He was able at one point to kiss his own arse, which is an extraordinary, <laughs> extraordinary tell. I'm surprised he even came out that evening, and um, it was quite remarkable. And uh, then he got back inside the box again. It was just Brilliant. quite breathtaking. Did you see any of it? I saw, I've seen none of it, but I've got to tune in, because it, we've regressed to the freak show again. It is, I mean, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Long overdue. Yeah, mm. no, it's... it's Spectacular. I would happily, I would happily go and see a freak again. You know, the bearded lady, um, you know, <laughs> fat people, yeah. whatever's <laughs> considered a freak nowadays. I don't know. The Cirque du Soleil is about the closest you can get, isn't it? You know, people who, as you say, can 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 lick their own, you know, yeah. knees or whatever. Well, actually, I could probably lick my own knees, but 
but isn't that, it, that isn't sort of thing. Isn't there supposed to be, you were mentioning about um, the possible rumour that Puff Daddy once paid in Deutsche Marks. Mm. Is there not a rumour that Prince supposedly had some ribs removed so that he could <coughs> his own <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> Really? Now, I, that's surely nonsense. Strum his own kind yeah. of uh, 